Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Karishma Connect. On this episode, I have got Namrata Budraja, co-founder of Shift Eco, which is a brand I've quite interestingly followed over the years, especially around the pandemic. I saw quite a few small businesses in the UAE set up via the platform. And Namrata tells me about how it all happened. How did she crack this formula and how did she get the platform running? Uh, set up this marketplace at a time when we were hitting the pandemic how did she establish a flourishing business despite all the hurdles uh, what is sustainability what does it mean in today's times how should people look at it why should they embrace it and a whole lot more in this enlightening yet interesting conversation on Karishma Connect go check it out until the next one stay tuned this is Karishma we're back every Sunday and Thursday and until the next one I'll see you soon it's a pleasure to have you and I can't wait to know more about this rather coincidental connect that I've had. Um, I'm really excited about this one. Great. As am I. Thank you so much for having me, Karishma, and uh, always happy to collaborate and support. Most welcome. See, the first question I ask on this podcast, and that's because I strongly believe that you tell your journey best, quite authentic and candid at it. So tell me about your journey so far. What's it been like? What has what has been your drive? What's driven you all throughout? And what's so special about where you are today? Right. So, um, so I'll give you a quick introduction. So I'm actually an HR and a consulting professional. I've had over 15 years of experience in HR and done the corporate world, worked with the you know, a company done a lot of large scale talent projects. So for me, I think I come from a family of entrepreneurs, being an entrepreneur and having my own company was uh, something that was always very exciting for me. Mm-hmm. Um, In my last role, I was heading a consulting team. And it so happened that I was uh, leading a project on sustainability education in Saudi Arabia. Okay. It was really You know, these kind of projects don't always come by in an HR consultant's lifetime. It was one of those unique projects that came up. And that really triggered my interest in social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So in early 2020, I actually decided to give up my corporate career. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went down to this uh, road of trying to figure what I wanted to do next. Okay. And... um, I literally saw a gap in the market where uh, one day walking into this grocery store in the UAE, which is full of plastic, mm-hmm. um, I came across this bamboo toothbrush and mm-hmm. I said, you know what, let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. And the shift was so easy yeah. that it really made me wonder why are more people not talking about it? Mm-hmm. And then when like a true consultant did more research, tried to understand the problem a bit better and realized that people want to be sustainable and eco-friendly but don't know how yeah they're very skeptical of the space they find it really daunting and with that aha moment I kind of started shift eco Mm. so I think really for me um I think where I am in my journey now is a really uh, exciting time uh, running my own company, trying to grow my own company. Uh, It's been uh, very exciting and uh, I'm quite happy with where I am. And that growth journey has been very inspiring because I have followed Shift Eco from around the 2020s that you launched in. I see the impact that it is delivering today. Tell me about yeah. the growth curve. Tell me about what were the challenges and opportunities like during all these years? So I think the first part of that would be is that uh, I delved into a field that I had no background in, mm-hmm. uh, whether it was e-commerce, whether it was sustainability. Of course, sustainability, I had some background because I was doing a project in it, but no formal education, not my uh, co-founder Sukriti, she was she's a branding genius she's into branding and marketing so uh, from marketing side we were taken care of um, I think from our side we initially were focused on being a very end consumer brand so mm. uh, we were focusing more on the e-commerce store um, but very quickly we realized that actually corporates have a big sustainability agenda yeah. and they are doing a lot for sustainability and the footprint that you get and the kind of impact you make working with corporates is quite manifold in comparison. So yeah. we actually now um, 
for us, we pivoted quite early and we're now a hybrid brand between uh, companies and individuals. We do have an end user platform even now, mm-hmm. um, but it is. Uh, but we also do a lot of work with corporates. So I think the journey has been a very interesting. It's 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 really been a test of resilience and flexibility, <laughs> and uh, understanding that things don't always go as you plan, and you have to change course when things don't, uh, you know take the shape the way you thought it would. Uh, So I think for us, it's been quite a journey. And I think Shiftico now uh, is working with some of the largest companies here in the UAE. We're also now starting to work with companies in Saudi Arabia. Uh, COP28 is coming up. It's the year of sustainability. There's so much happening. It's uh, It's your year. (laughs) It's our year. And And I hope it's not just limited to this year, which is the other skepticism and, um, it would be very interesting to see what happens next year. True. I think COP27 did quite the conversation as well. And uh, yeah. definitely now that COP28 is happening in the region, I think there's yeah. a lot to look out for. Yeah. On that note, I want to ask you this because I've asked many sustainless on my show and that covers yeah. a wide range of, you know, some of them have been e-commerce entrepreneurs, some of them have been designers. Each one yeah. has had a unique definition of sustainability you know from going yeah. clean to uh to getting into audits to getting yeah. to the aspect of just being able to sustain a healthier ecosystem these are some of the yeah. different conversations that i've had to this question what does sustainability mean to you after having explored it over the years now so I look at sustainability from a very end consumer um, uh, format because I think all of us as individuals have responsibility. Yeah. So the way I put it is that sustainability is about maintaining equili- equilibrium. Mm-hmm. So making sure we are responsible that our consumption doesn't harm the planet. So being aware, um, being uh, not going for fads mm-hmm. and uh, making sure we're keeping our uh, knowledge base up to date so that we're not harming the planet and, you know, in return. And I think uh, sustainability is an evolution. Um, I think a couple of years ago, a lot of people were talking about zero waste living and people were talking about a lot of extreme ways of uh, being sustainable. And I think that's what kind of, scares people about the whole space oh my god uh sustainability is too expensive it's a rich man's problem i don't have to have anything to do with it i think for me sustainability is about making better choices every day and uh this is a tagline actually of shifty ko we say make small shifts in your daily lifestyle small shifts that have a big impact so it's a journey you don't have to always aim for perfection i have a long way to go even now despite trying to be mindful because there's there's no end to sustainability right the way you commute the way you travel everything has a footprint so how do you optimize that um so i think uh, it's more about uh doing better every day and being mindful and being conscious consumers more broadly and tell me, how do you associate that then with being a social entrepreneur? And this one's for budding social entrepreneurs, specifically trying to make their mark in that kind of a field. What yeah. are your tips to kind of making sure that this purpose uh, can be retained in the business model as well? Yeah. So I think um, now uh, from traditional business where people are only looking at profit, people are slowly realizing that you have to look at people, planet and profit. So now the planet equation has really come into play in a very big way with ESG taking center stage, right? Um, So I I think there are two good things for budding entrepreneurs. One, there is there is, I think, a mandate, government mandate in a lot of ways for people to consider the planet. Mm. Policy always helps, right? So that's one. Two, I think it's about the kind of line you're in. It's uh, about uh, making a compelling case uh, for the work you're doing. What is the differentiator of your product or service? So I think that has to be centered, uh, has to be highlighted quite clearly. As a social entrepreneur, now given that mandates have come in, it's it's actually a lot easier because yeah. a lot of companies and yeah. people like the conversation is there. Um, and I think for us, really, Karishman, I, I, I mean, I'd like to give that advice with um, 
demonstration. So I think for us, while we are an e-commerce platform and the business of products, one very core thing that we do at Shift Eco is education awareness. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of events, we do a lot of talking, we do a lot of workshops because just selling products mm -hmm. cannot change behavior of people. Yeah. It will not help people shift the needle. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm trying to say is that as a social entrepreneur, you have to stay true to what you're trying to do. And I think in our case, very early on, we realized that uh, education will play a very big role in what we are doing. So we're not just any e-commerce platform that just sells products. We want people to come ask questions, discuss how we curate our products, mm -hmm. uh, talk about a little bit more about, oh, everyone says organic is better. But is it really better if it's being thrown from a cafe across the world, you know? So I, I think the idea is to just to engage in debate, to talk about key topics, to debunk myths as you, as I would call it. So I think it's about staying true to your cause and not thinking conventionally. Mm -hmm. um, so the way typical e-commerce businesses think is, oh, what's my cost of acquisition of my customer? And like, what's yeah. my basket size? <laughs> and what's my, and, and sure, we look at those metrics. It's not like we don't. Um, but I think what we do recognize is that if we want more adoption and we want people to shift behavior, the education piece becomes much more important. And it also helps us keep ourselves more true to our cause. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very wonderful insight that you shared right there that, you know, it's very important because this is something that I've seen. Um, and I was speaking to an e-commerce consultant as well about this, that it's very important to have some purpose in your e-commerce strategy. It is important to look yeah. back at every end of it. Tell me some of those myths that you mentioned, maybe about three of them that are really important for people to know. If you could debunk some of the key myths for me that you have come across. <laughs> so I think uh, one is this organic one, which I think is a big one. A lot of people are really focused on organic, but then you really question, like especially with organic vegetables, with organic fruits, all of them come laced in single-use plastic that are lying in our you know, grocery stores and everyone is very happy to pay the <laughs> premium yeah. to buy them. But the question is, is the nutritional value really the same when, you know, it's been thrown across? Secondly, the emissions of that product. Mm -hmm. Now you verify that produce with local produce and you wonder which is better. And now with the UAE focusing so much on food security, so many local farms coming up, yeah. what is you know, like what is the educated uh, choice to make? Uh, and that's my point, right, Karishma? I think with sustainability, it's not about spending more money. It's about buying lesser, but buying better. Mm -hmm. And and like then the other thing is about making things last, like thinking of uh, thrift shopping. Like a lot of people are very against, uh, you know, buying secondhand, but there's a lot of that now happening in the UAE. And talking about debunking myths, um, a lot of people uh, question recycling in the UAE. Yes. And they're like, well, actually, nothing gets recycled. Mm -hmm. However, if you scratch under the surface, I agree with the skepticism, but there are still some facilities and some companies that are doing some fantastic work. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, and there are a lot of these SMEs that have sprouted in the region that not many people talk about. And I think for me, really, Karishma, it was eye-opening because when I joined the ecosystem as a SME, huh. uh, I wanted to collaborate with other people. I wanted to understand what else is happening out there. Hmm. And the more I dug, the more I realized that actually in the UAE, there's so many solutions. There are people doing such phenomenal work. It's hmm. just that I never heard of it before. It's not coming. <laughs> That's Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so I mean... Before we um, think things don't exist, maybe just Google or maybe just ask around. There's a lot happening. Uh, and I mean, there's so many amazing entrepreneurs that come to mind as I say this. Um, there's a lot going on in the sustainability space in the UAE. Um, and for it to take center stage, all of us need to talk about it. An entrepreneur recently who had, she's from a different field. She's into music education, but she she's had a similar background in the sense that she's had a very diverse 
degree background wherein she's done finance and law and all of that and I'm talking about Bindu Subramanian and okay. she told me about she spoke to me about how it was difficult to convert from this entire background and call herself an entrepreneur to come to terms with that tag and that responsibility and realize that okay I am an entrepreneur did you I'm curious to know did you in your journey because you had a similar shift from this rapidly paced corporate zone to starting your own and that too if I might call it I I, I don't think the pace would be slower but the purpose definitely focuses on also uh, you know as they say slower and greener living as well right so what what went on did you face something like that as well what what were your challenges so I think firstly Karishma moving from a corporate job to becoming an entrepreneur is a big jump Mm -hmm. because suddenly you're not responsible just for one thing or like in my previous role my primary responsibility was delivering projects so if all the projects were on track I was good everything else was ancillary here as an entrepreneur you're responsible for anything and everything (laughs) (laughs) whether it's registration legal marketing blah 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 name it and it sits on you and of course your co-founder too but it's a lot so yeah, so you know people really glamorize entrepreneurship and i always tell people it sounds very glamorous but uh, uh, it's hard it's tough especially in the beginning especially if you know feel that's you know that's not as established um so for me calling myself an entrepreneur was not hard i always wanted to be an entrepreneur that entrepreneurial spirit has always been in me like i said i come from a family of entrepreneurs so for me that that aspect was not so hard but um, I think to truly understand what it takes to run a business and the sacrifice the blood sweat tears I don't think people hear or see that enough yeah (laughs) Uh, and I I, and I and I really think like it's hard to run a business it's um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of um you know, it's a lot of multitasking and I'm wearing a lot of different hats at the same time. Um, and especially in the space of sustainability, it also means trying to be creative, trying to be innovative because there's no precedent, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not like you're trying to, uh, you know, repeat right. or replicate yeah. something. You're trying to create something from scratch. So it's uh it's quite uh, a lot <laughs> uh There's and no uh, time you started i think there was no yeah. reference point around that time there's no reference point so like a lot of people ask us so who are your competitors and you know what is the market size and i'm like okay like i mean even competitors there are smes in the space don't get me wrong yeah. but i think replicable businesses are very few yeah yeah. And uh, established replicable businesses are even lesser. Very true. So, right. so it's a very so there's no benchmark, so to say. Um, well, tell me how you th- what you think about this. That it's a field that's very much led by a noble purpose, right? To create impact. Yeah. In that kind of a field, do you think competition plays that much of a game as it does in like the other sectors? Because it really also then becomes a fact that there's so many platforms, which is great, right? Because that much of yeah. awareness is happening around the products as well. So how does how do you treat competition in this kind of a field then? So I think for us, firstly, uh, of course, um, you know, and I and I, I really want to emphasize that too. So a lot of people in this part of the world, when they hear sustainability, it somehow screen, screams not for profit or NGO. Yeah, <laughs> and right. that's really not the case. Because that's one. Right? It's people, planet, and profit. You also want to be a sustainable, financially sustainable business. So yeah. it, it's firstly a mix of three. Uh, when I say competition, I think for us, we uh, typically are very collaborative. We are doing all sorts of work with 
different companies, a uh, lot of SMEs. So I think for us, uh, in terms of competition, it, the more the merrier, to be honest, it makes it easier for us to have conversations with, uh, you know, when we're talking to a company, if they've heard of someone else, it actually makes our job a bit easier. So yeah. in that sense, when I say competition, it's not like, oh, who's, it's not like a race, if you yeah. know what I mean. Yes. Um, but competition can be healthy and it helps. And yeah, actually, uh, it's a uh, very welcome, you know, it uh, makes it more mainstream, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. In fact, this is something I saw very, um, uh, just yesterday, there was a journalist who had posted about how he's moving to New York and his direct competitor and commented on that saying that, you know, thank you for keeping us uh, keeping us on the on the go and you know wanting like you end up wanting to level up because the other person yeah. is doing this so I think it's yeah. really inspiring when you look at it that way definitely yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. and then tell me what have been your learnings about setting up the platform itself? I'm going to come down to the technical side of it. Setting up a platform, sourcing from these different brands and getting it started. What what are some, If I could ask you, I can't get into the details of it, but if I could ask you, what are the two major things that you have learned that you could share with anybody who is trying to set up an e-commerce business that they should keep in mind? So I think one, there's a lot of open source easy technology platforms out there mm -hmm. shopify wordpress they're fantastic super user friendly okay. so firstly leverage those it makes your setup really quick okay the second thing that i would say for anyone looking at starting an e-commerce store uh don't aim like i mean we all want to have very user friendly websites of course we do mm -hmm. but uh, don't get really fussed about it. Get started. Start mm -hmm. getting beta together. Start the process uh, and keep improvising then, but get started. I've seen a lot of people uh, that I speak to who are setting up an e-commerce platform who are waiting for that perfect design and that perfect, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, just last week I was doing a, I was, I was uh, uh, doing a workshop for a school and I showed them the first version of Shiftico in October 2020. Um, and I was really not happy with what was going up. Yeah. But, you know, our whole approach was, let's get started. Let's just see what the response in the market is, how people respond to us, what happens, you know, when we launch. Because what you'll realize very quickly is that uh, uh, you'll hear from the market, you'll get feedback, you'll anyways want to do things differently. So don't obsess on perfection would be my second piece of advice. And like for e-commerce these days, there's a there's so many resources, there's so much. Um, you can really self-learn. I self-learned a lot. <laughs> uh, and there's enough resources out there. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of scope and a lot happening. And uh, just uh, make sure you're networking, talking to the right people. Um, yeah. And you've traveled around the world, I know, because from whatever I researched, you have been to a couple of places. Yeah. Have you noticed anything specific that has that promises a future in sustainability in this part of the world that you're operating in? Absolutely. So I think um, UAE is uh, really accelerating the sustainability in the sustainability space. But there's also a lot of scope for, you know, the way things are done. And small examples, right, when I was living in Germany back in 2008 or in France in 2013, there was very clear segregation, mm -hmm. recycling systems, um, whereas here, if you want, I recycle in my house, but I have to do it specially, right? Like, yes. otherwise, if you're throwing your waste uh, in my building, there's a shoot, one single shoot for everything. Yeah. Um, so I think from a um, perspective of infrastructure, mm -hmm. there's still a lot that needs to be done by real estate developers, government, you know, to make it easier for end consumers or even mandating it for that matter, you know, Um and because we're playing so much of catch up in that basic sense, I think there's a lot we're going to do. I think as a society, UAE can come across as a very consumeristic sort of a country. Yeah. 
Uh, and there's a lot that we can do to reduce our emissions as a small country. And I'm really excited that COP28 is happening in the UAE. It makes this conversation more center stage. Yes. And um, and I think for me, the fact that the UAE wants to host a COP and has these commitments for net zero, uh, I'm really hopeful for the future and really hopeful for uh, things to change. That's a brilliant note. And my... Last question to you will be coming back and circling back to the platform itself. Tell me that yeah. one product that you have currently up the platform that people must check out. <laughs> oh, well, one product. Okay. I think I, I personally really love these reusable bamboo toothbrushes we have. So yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> they're really cool because the base is steel and the top is bamboo. Yeah. And you just essentially buy the full toothbrush the first time. And the next time you don't need to buy the toothbrush. You just buy the replacement heads. Okay. Um, I find it pretty funky and they're very good to use. So that's a really easy, simple thing that I would recommend, which is pretty cheap as well. <laughs> I've actually used bamboo toothbrushes and I, I, in fact, end up finding them much more better and durable than the normal ones as well. So yeah. I recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, but like this one that I'm speaking about only has a bamboo head because if you think of a toothbrush, traditionally only your top, your bristles go bad. Yes. So basically, true. once you're done, you screw off the top and you buy, you get a new uh, thing, and it, it just goes on. I've used mine for over a year already, and I just keep changing the bristles as they go bad. That's lovely. I know what I have to do after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Namrata. Your insights have been super inspiring for me, and I'm sure they will continue to, uh, you know, to whoever this reaches, I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Thanks so much, uh, Karishma. Thanks a lot.